Go straight into the video. Don't have time to waste, so straight into it. Um, by far the most asked question we get via instant message on Instagram and by phone call here to the workshop um, is what is best, ECU uh, remap or a piggyback ECU? Um, so first of all, we've got to begin with the end in mind and also I guess I need to explain what a piggyback ECU is and what a remap is. So um, we need to begin with the end in mind uh, to enable us to, I guess, make the correct decision on what is the best method of tuning your vehicle for you, I guess not just in the short term but the long term. That may mean that while you're not towing a 3.2 tonne caravan now, um, if that's something you may be doing, you think you may be doing in the next year or so, then um, it would you know, need to be taken into consideration. Uh, if money's no ob object, it doesn't matter. Obviously, you'll do what you want, and then when your situation changes, you'll, you'll I guess, change the direction you're going. So um, we'll begin with the end in mind. Um, what is an ECU remap? An ECU remap is um, we essentially recalibrate um, the factory ECU. ECU or ECM stands for engine control module, or engine, engine control unit. So um, with remapping, we're not adding any hardware physically to the car. It's um, taking the factory ECU, reading that, um, manipulating uh, the calibration file inside that ECU, changing things like uh, fuel injection timing, fuel, fuel injection quantity, boost, turbo boost settings um, to uh, most of the time increase power. Um, that's what nearly all the tunes are looking for. Um, whereas a piggyback ECU um, is exactly that. It, it, and this is, a, this is an example of a uni chip here, uh, UniX that we use a lot of. Um, there are a lot of other brands, there are some other brands that we also use and UniChip's probably the flagship model, but um, yeah, piggyback ECU means exactly that. The factory ECU is still running the car, running the engine if you like. Um, the piggyback ECU enables us to plug in with a laptop computer and make all of our changes via the piggyback ECU with no changes made to the factory ECU calibration file. So um, that's the main difference. Um, I guess um, the, sh the, the shortest answer I can give is if you are looking for um, the most power that you can make um, and you know not considering everything else, um, then a piggyback ECU is probably the way that you want to go. Um, most of the customers that are going, or that we suggest go to a piggyback ECU, will be using their vehicle for the widest variety and range of uses, and they will generally be giving them a hard time uh, in those different areas, um, whether that's um, beach, rock climbing, uh, towing heavy trailers for work or, or leisure, um, and I guess also then using that vehicle for um, regular trips where they're not towing, where they're not giving it a hard time um, and they want to get the most fuel efficient tune that they can get. So with the, with the piggyback ECU, it enables us to have, an, I guess, a less compromised tune where we can uh, have a setting and like the, the uni the uni x uni chip will have five different modes of use we'll have mode zero will be standard um, mode one two three and uh, sorry mode two three four and five will be custom tunes um, each of those custom tunes we can tailor to a specific target to try and do an exception exceptional job at that um, so having said that uh, with the piggyback ecu with four custom maps if you're in fine weather with no headwind on a flat road um, at 110k an hour on light throttle, then you would probably go to your economy mode, um, which 
isn't taking into uh, consideration engine acceleration time, peak torques, peak power, those sorts of things. It is specifically designed for getting the greatest amount of economy in that day's situation. Um, it will generally have a towing map, is how we set them up with a towing map and a, and a high power map. But your towing map um, maybe is not just for towing, it's basically gonna be for when you have the vehicle under load. Um, it, you're going to have more power, greater torque. Uh, essentially, it can possibly lead to a situation where the vehicle will, because of the greater torque, will actually hold a taller gear in a situation where with the standard amount of power, vehicle going up a hill, vehicle runs out of power, you're going from, say, fifth gear back to fourth gear or from fourth gear back to third gear. Uh, with a really good tune, we can generally try and stay a gear higher. And if there's one thing that gets overlooked is um, our greatest fuel savings comes from reducing our engine RPM as much as possible. So, um, you know, that's kind of comes into the, the design of the mapping with either a remap, um, re recalibration, or a piggyback ECU. We're sort of looking for the same things, but we can just tailor them much more nicely with a piggyback ECU. Um, there are times when both systems may need to be used on certain vehicles and every car is different and every use is different. So some vehicles we do a remap um, to target some things that we can't do with a piggyback ECU. And we also have the piggyback. So that gets near the upper scale of expense. Um, and that's, but that's what some customers need. Remap um, is great for those who um, I guess are doing a lot of road traveling like bitumen top, um, some full driving, but mostly bitumen and towing a similar load, e.g. a caravan all the time. And they don't have these big variations and they're not looking for outright huge power at any given time. Um, when we're looking for really high horsepower, um, we are, I guess, getting near the limits of some of the engine's parameters. And that's, again, that's a discussion we have with the customer. In how much fuel we, um, we uh, deliver to the engine and how much boost we deliver to the engine and other settings. And that may be, you know, a high power map that is going to be used for short periods of time. When I say short periods of time, less than a minute or less than two minutes at wide open throttle at peak torque. Um, so it's a mode that they go to to do something specific. Um, generally sand dunes, 35 inch tyres, tyres let down to 12 psi, loads of traction. Um, they're going to be able to use that higher power. Um, if you're not doing that extreme full driving, then a reflash may be for you. Um, I'll just have a quick look at my notes here. Um, Okay, so another consideration with, with a piggyback ECU is that for some models, um, whether it's a Unichip, whether it's an Ultra Boost from ECU shop, um, whether it's an Alpha Tech, um, a lot of these are essentially plug and play now for the later model cars, which is great for vehicles under warranty because we're not cutting any wires, we're not doing any soldering, we're not messing with any of that. Um, they're plugging directly into existing looms and connectors and we're not making any physical changes to a new car that's going to be under warranty for the next five years. Um, other vehicles we have to wire these in. Um, for example, this is a this is a Unichip kit for a ZD30. Um, that's the box that we fit to the car. And here's, I guess, a little bit of a, a generic loom I go that goes to the uni chip. Um, and these all get wired into the factory ECU loom. So um, that's, what, you know, cutting wires, um, splicing wires in, connecting different wires. Um, so it's modifying the vehicle's uh, loom. So that's something to keep in mind if that suits you or doesn't suit you. Um, 
The other thing with the piggyback ECU that you're not going to have with remapping is that with the, like the Unichip, we go to one of these boost control solenoids, which are faster acting, more accurate, more reliable, uh, just nicer all round for controlling boost. And the Unichip allows us to map that boost. So we, we have our own boost strategy uh, with something like a piggyback, a, a high-end piggyback ECU. Some of the, I guess, the lower end ECUs don't give us provisions for standalone closed loop boost control. They do allow boost control, but it's generally via the factory boost solenoid. And it's, I guess, modifying the factory boost, um, what's, the, what's the best word for it, um, strategy. So, you know, we, we're kind of stuck with the factory strategy on the lower end uh, piggyback ECU, whereas the high end uh, piggyback ECU, we can essentially have our own boost strategy um, that doesn't, we're not just mimicking or sort of, sorry, sorry modifying the, the factory boost um, and making it greater or less. We've got our own strategy, um, which is also closed loop, which is handy. The other thing with a high end piggyback ECU is that for some vehicles, particular, particularly a lot of the newer vehicles, we can build in protection on those. Example, we can have temperature sensors in the transmission, take coolant temperature, um, exhaust temperature, those as three common ones, where if they get to a certain level, we can reduce the power of the engine to reduce temperatures. So I guess it's like a built-in protection mode uh, and we can program those temperatures where we like which is um, very handy for vehicles that are, be, are going to be driven by multiple uh, users of that vehicle that may not be, I guess, um, looking at gauges all the time. So it makes it, I guess, a little bit foolproof in that it has its own built-in protection system. Um, the cheaper piggybacks won't have that, um, but also everything's kind of reflect, reflected in, in price, of course, like everything always is. So. Um, I guess that's a, probably a, a, another topic for another day is gauges. Um, which, whichever way you do it, I'm a firm believer that whatever 4x4 or off-road or, or perf any performance vehicle that you have, and that's what we're talking about here, we are talking about performance or increasing the performance of a vehicle. So 